technical malversation, illegal use of public funds or property is committed by a public officer who applies a public fund or property under his administration to any public use other than that for which such fund or property was appropriated by law or ordinance. Malum Prohibitum In Isidro v. People, November 14, 2012, the mayor who applied 10 boxes of food appropriated for feeding program to the beneficiaries of shelter assistance program is liable for technical malversation. Mayor's Act, no matter how noble or minuscule the amount diverted, constitutes the crime of technical malversation. Criminal intent is not an element of technical malversation. The law punishes the act of diverting public property earmarked by law or ordinance for a particular public purpose to another public purpose. The offense is malum prohibitum, meaning that the prohibited act is not inherently immoral but becomes a criminal offense because positive law forbids its commission based on considerations of public policy, order, and convenience. It is the commission of an act as defined by the law and not the character or effect thereof that determines whether or not the provision has been violated. Hence, malice or criminal intent is completely irrelevant. Dura Lex Sid Lex 2015 Bar Exam Intentional felonies are mala inse because under Article 3 of the Revised Penal Code they must be committed by means of dolo. However, the Supreme Court made an exception to this rule. Technical marvization is malum inse. Hence, dolo is not an element of technical malversation. Under Varian's rule, in De La Corista v. Sandigambayan, without allegation that the 8 million were applied to a public use other than that for which such sums had been appropriated by law or ordinance, the accused cannot be tried for technical malversation under criminal information for violation of Section 3, Letter E, of RA 3019. In the crime of malversation, the offender misappropriates public funds for his own personal use or allows any other person to take such public funds for the latter's personal use. On the other hand, in technical malversation, the public officer applies public funds under his administration, not for his own or another's personal use but to a public use other than that for which the fund was appropriated by law or ordinance. Thus, an accused acquitted of malversation cannot be convicted of technical malversation since the latter does not include or is not necessarily included in former charged in the information because they are distinctively different from each other. Parunga v. Sandigambayan, Ombudsman cannot charge respondent for technical malversation if the complaint in the preliminary investigation charge him of malversation. Moreover, acquittal or conviction for malversation is not a bar in prosecuting the accused for technical malversation. There is no double jeopardy because these crimes are different and distinct from each other. Modes of Committing Malversation Malversation is a concept similar to that of estafa through misappropriation under Article 315 and theft under Article 308. Under malversation through misappropriation, if the mode of committing malversation is appropriation or misappropriation, the concept of this crime is similar to that of estafa through misappropriation. Lending loan is an act of ownership. Performing an act of ownership over a property by one who is not the owner thereof without authority is misappropriation. Granting loans to municipal employees out of the public funds is malversation. A court sheriff who lent money, which is the proceeds of the action sale,
to his office mate is liable for malversation. The money is invested with the character of public fund since it is under custodia legis. Lending money without authority is considered as misappropriation. 2008. And when this both treasurer and cashed with public funds checks drawn in favor of his wife, the checks bounce, the drawer not having enough cash in the jewelry bank. The municipal treasurer, in encashing private checks from public funds, violated regulations of his office. Dispersing public fund in violation of regulation is considered as misappropriation. A provincial cashier who grants loans to provincial employees to the valley system is liable for malversation through misappropriation. To tolerate such a practice is to give a license to every dispersing officer to conduct a lending operation with the use of public funds. There is no law or regulation allowing accountable officers to extend loans to anyone against bails or valleys or cheats given in exchange by the borrowers. On the other hand, the Commission on Audit time and again through repeated office memoranda and rulings had warned against the acceptance of valleys or cheats by any dispersing officer because such transactions are really forms of loans. Cabela versus Sandigan Bayan and Meneses versus Sandigan Bayan. However, in Riuda versus Sandigan Bayan, the Supreme Court said that the ruling in Cabello and Meneses cannot be applied to this case, where the accused, a municipal treasurer, did not grant the cash advances or veils or valleys to the municipal collectors. The municipal collectors did not remit the cash collections to the treasurer. They merely gave the treasurer cheats or valleys representing cash advances. The treasurer never had the opportunity to disperse public funds under the veil system. For in the first place, the public funds were not turned over to him. Neither can the treasurer be considered guilty of passive malversation. He did not tolerate the practice of making cash advances by the municipal officials. However, he was helpless about the situation because it was done with the consent of the municipal mayor. Moreover, the municipal collectors restored the amounts prior to the conduct of preliminary investigation. In malversation through taking, the concept of taking as an element of malversation, intentional or passive, is different from that of misappropriation. According to Luis Reyes, an authority in criminal law, the public funds or property need not be misappropriated as the word take is separated by the word or from the word misappropriation in Article 217 of the Revised Penal Code. If the mode of committing malversation is taking, the concept of this crime is similar to that of theft. In Riuda Jr. v. Sandigan Bayan, the Supreme Court in Bank said that in Salamera v. Sandigan Bayan, it was empathically declared that in malversation, a public officer must take public funds, money, or property and misappropriate it to his own private use or benefit. There must be asportation of public funds or property akin to the taking of another's property in theft. For example, a teller in the office of the city treasurer who was leaving the office with public funds collected by him is liable for consummated crime of malversation. In malversation through taking, the taking can be committed by the cannibal officer himself or by another person. If the taking is done by another person, malversation can be committed by means of dolo or culpa. Under intentional malversation, malversation through taking is committed by means of dolo. If the public property was taken by the accountable officer or by another person with consent of the accountable officer. In U.S. versus Ponte, the municipal treasurer, with the help of a janitor and five policemen, took the safe containing money from the municipal treasury. The treasurer is liable for malversation through taking. The janitor and policemen, although they are not accountable officers, are liable not for robbery by using 
for one thing they are liable for malversation because of conspiracy rule but in passive malversation malversation to taking is committed by means of culpa if the public property or fund was taken by another person and the accountable officer permitted the taking through negligence or abandonment this crime of culpable malversation is also called passive malversation 2012 generally the revised penal code imposes a lower penalty for crimes committed through criminal negligence however in malversation the penalty is the same regardless of whether the offense is committed with criminal intent or true criminal negligence. In Office of the Court Administrator v. Soriano, it was held that if a deputy clerk of court did not exercise the strictest supervision on his designated collection clerk, the former would suffer the consequences of failure to remit the collections by the latter through negligence. In short, by failing to exercise strict supervision on the collection clerk, the clerk of court could be liable for malversation by permitting other person to take public fund through negligence. Cited in the Revised Penal Code, Book 2 by Luis Reyes, in People v. Pili, the postmaster placed the cash, warrants, and checks of the post office in his table door instead of his iron safe. On the night of that day, his door was forced open and the cash, warrants, and checks were stolen. For failure to place the public funds in the iron safe, the accused was convicted of malversation for permitting other person to take the property through negligence. A city treasurer leaves keys for his service car and lock his office inside the case. Thieves stole the keys and used the same to take the vehicle and steal money in his office. The treasurer is liable for malversation, which can be committed by means of culpa, permitting others to take public property by an accountable officer to negligence or abandonment constitutes malversation. The thief is liable for kidnapping. 2005. Note: If the treasurer consents to the taking by the thief, they are liable for malversation because of conspiracy. To be held liable for passive malversation, it is important that there is a third person who took the public fund, and the accountable officer permitted the taking by the third person through abandonment or negligence. For example, if the administrator of Manila Zoo failed to lock the cage of birds, and as a consequence, the birds escape, he is not liable for malversation by means of culpa. The birds were not taken by a thief. They simply escaped from the cage. The accountable officer did not permit the taking of public properties by another person through negligence or abandonment, since there is no taking that transpired in the first place. Article 217 of the Revised Penal Code in defining passive malversation states, any public officer who, by reason of the duties of his office, is accountable for public funds or property through abandonment or negligence shall permit any other person to take such public funds or property. The word taking is a concept different from misappropriation. However, Supreme Court considered misappropriation as within the contemplation of the word take in passive malversation. In Torres versus People, it was held that malversation may be committed either through a positive act of misappropriation of public funds or property or passively through negligence by allowing another to commit such misappropriation. In some, passive malversation may be committed by an accountable officer who shall allow or permit through negligence misappropriation of public property by another person. In Sarigumba versus Sandigambayan, the accused, a mayor, was not charged of intentional malversation since he did not make use of the money which was chargeable to the CDF of Congressman Ramiro. He was properly charged for culpable malversation for distributing the said money to barangay captains without informing them that the money should be used for the peace and order campaign. 
as a consequence of which the barangay captains misappropriated them for personal use. If the accused is charged of intentional malversation, but evidence shows that the crime is committed through negligence, he can be convicted of culpable malversation because of the variance rule. Dolo or culpa is just a mode of committing malversation. Even if the mode charged differs from mode proved, accused can still be convicted of malversation. An accountable officer may thus be convicted of malversation even if there is no direct evidence of misappropriation, and the only evidence is that there is a shortage in the officer's account, which he has not been able to explain satisfactorily. All that is essential is proof that the accountable officer has received public funds, but that when demand thereof is made, he is unable to satisfactorily account for the same. To illustrate, X, a patrolman, was accused of grave threats before the court. He was arrested and detained in the municipal jail. Based on the certification of the chief of police that X performed continued service without absence, X was able to draw his salary during the period of his confinement. The mayor approved the payroll, and the treasurer paid his salary. The chief of police is liable for falsification of certificate of service. The mayor and treasurer are liable for malversation through culpa, since they allowed X to take or misappropriate public funds through negligence. X is liable for estafa. Note, if there is conspiracy in this problem, all of them are liable for unintentional malversation. 1959 Bar A. A provincial treasurer delivered 10,000 to B. A provincial cashier. B, with the help of another employee, issued A a receipt of 1,000 only. As A was in a hurry, he did not notice the discrepancy in the receipt. The following day, the bookkeeper of the treasurer's office discovered a shortage of 9,000 in the account of A. A insisted he entrusted 10,000 to B, but as he was in a hurry, he merely glanced at the receipt and thought that it was all right. 1972 a and B are not liable for malversation since there is no showing that the 9,000 was misappropriated. B is liable for falsification of documents since making an untruthful statement in the official receipt is an act of falsification. A is not liable since there is no showing that he conspired with B in falsifying the document. Note, if the amount of 9,000 was misappropriated, B is liable for intentional malversation while A for culpable Malversation. Under presumption of malversation, mere absence of funds is not sufficient proof of conversion. Neither is the mere failure of the public officer to turn over the funds at any given time sufficient to make even the prima facie case. In fine, conversion must be proved. However, an accountable officer may be convicted of malversation even in the absence of direct proof of misappropriation so long as there is evidence of shortage in his account, which he is unable to explain. The Grandma vs. Sandigambayan In the crime of malversation, all that is necessary for conviction is sufficient proof that the accountable officer had received public funds, that he did not have them in his possession when demand therefore was made, and that he could not satisfactorily explain his failure to do so. Failure of an accountable public officer to explain the missing funds shall be prima facie evidence of misappropriation, disputable by evidence showing that he had fully accounted for the alleged cash shortage. Demand is not an element of the crime of malversation. It is only a requisite for the application of the presumption. Without this presumption, the accused may still be proved guilty under Article 217 based on direct evidence of malversation, Mooney v. People. Restitution Restitution may or may not be considered as defense or a mitigating circumstance. Under the law, the refund of the sum misappropriated even before the commencement of the criminal prosecution does not exempt the guilty person from liability for the crime. This is because damage is not an element of malversation and payment after the consummation of the crime of malversation 
is not one of the modes of extinguishing criminal liability. In Kipto versus Sandik and Bayan, however, restitution, if coupled with other circumstances, may be considered as a defense either because it negates dolo or it rebuts the presumption of malversation, whether or not restitution is sufficient to exculpate. An accountable public officer should be decided on the basis of the facts thereof. Cabello versus Sandik and Bayan. Restitution made upon demand. Upon examination of the accounts of the municipal treasurer, the auditor found a shortage of 1,000. When informed of the shortage, the treasurer took out 1,000 from his wallet and turned over the amount to the auditor, who accepted the sign. 1978. The treasurer is not liable for malversation. Immediately funding the missing money upon demand will negate the presumption of malversation. Hence, restitution is a defense. U.S. v. Feliciano allowed restitution in Panganipan v. People. Good faith is a valid defense in a prosecution for malversation of public funds, as it would negate criminal intent on the part of the accused. Accused full liquidation of his cash advance for trouble by means of an arrangement, deduction from salary and terminal leave pay, allowed by the COA, ultimately translated into good faith. Accused was acquitted. In Villacorta v. People, the municipal treasurer released public funds to government personnel for allowances, commutation leave, travel expenses, etc., which was disallowed by the audit team. The accused did not put the missing funds to personal use. In fact, when he demanded payment from said personnel, they redeemed their cheats and made restitution. The accused was able to overturn the presumption of malversation. In Kisa v. Sandigambayan, the accused, a post office teller, incurred a shortage because the audit team disallowed cash advances, amount representing accommodated private checks, and an actual cash shortage of one peso and 74 cents. However, the accused reimbursed the amount on the day of the audit, three days thereafter, and another three days later. The Supreme Court, in the spirit of leniency, held that the accused had successfully overturned the presumption of guilt. None of the funds was used by him for his personal interest. The cash advances were given in good faith and out of goodwill to co-employees. There was no negligence, malice, or intent to defraud, and the actual cash shortage was only one peso and 74 cents which together with the disallowed items was fully restituted within a reasonable time. Mitigating Circumstance In Kisu case, the accused did not use for personal interest the public funds since the cash advances were given to the other government employees an exchange of private checks with cash or mere accommodation. The restitution and the circumstance of non-personal use of the funds were treated as a defense. However, Manuel v. Honorable Sandigan Bayan, the mayor and treasurer allowed loans from the public funds, not only in favor of municipal employees, but also to themselves. In sum, they used the public funds for their personal interest. In this case, restitution was not considered a defense, but merely a mitigating circumstance. Restitution of fund is a mitigating circumstance analogous to voluntary surrender if it was immediately and voluntarily made before the case was instituted. Navarro v. Menezes The accused was charged of malversation involving the amount of 1.1 million passes. Upon filing of information, she voluntarily surrendered and posted cash bonds. Accused was able to return the amount of 800,000. The Supreme Court said that although partial restitution is akin to voluntary surrender, both shall be considered as separate mitigating circumstances. Thus, the special mitigating circumstances of partial restitution and surrender were appreciated. The penalty was lowered by one degree. Under mitigating circumstances, which is not a defense, restitution, which is made after 
an unreasonable period of time cannot be considered as a defense or a mitigating circumstance in malversation. Rundy, an NBI agent, was issued by the NBI two firearms. After a year, the NBI director made an inspection of all firearms issued. Rundy, who reported for work that morning, did not show up during the inspection. He went on absence without leave, a wall. After two years, he surrendered to the NBI the two firearms issued to him. He was charged with malversation of government property before the Sandy Gambayan. Rundi put up the defense that actually the firearms were stolen by his friend. 1994. Rundi is liable for malversation to establish the elements of malversation and justify conviction. The prosecution has only to prove that the accused received public funds or property and that he could not account for them, did not have them in his possession, and could not give a reasonable excuse for the disappearance of the same. His allegation that the firearms were stolen from him is unworthy of belief in view of his failure to report to his superior the alleged theft. That omission and his subsequent disappearance led to no other conclusion than that he appropriated firearm for his own benefit and advantage. Restitution after the commission of the malversation affects only the civil liability of the offender but does not extinguish his criminal liability. Felicilda v. Gorospe. Moreover, restitution which is made after unreasonable period of time cannot be considered as a mitigating circumstance analogous to voluntary surrender. Sifranca. Junior versus Cindy Gambayan.